The factory fuel lines have started leaking on my Forester, and rather than replacing these fuel lines with factory fuel lines again, I wanted to upgrade it with some stainless steel braided AN lines that won't leak. But when you change your fuel lines to AN lines, you might as well change out your fuel rails. And if you change out your fuel rails, you might as well put in top feed 1050cc injectors. And if you put in top feed 1050cc injectors, you might as well put in a flex fuel sensor. And if you put a flex fuel sensor in, you might as well change out your turbo to best utilize the ethanol. And if you change out your turbo, you might as well put a bigger intercooler on to cool down the charge temps of the larger turbo. And so on and so on. In this video, I'm going to show you the slippery slope that led to this Forester making a lot more horsepower. Ironically, in the name of seeking out reliability. So today we are going to work on the Forester here at Andertech Automotive. We're gonna do a lot of stuff to it. Uh, we're gonna do Cobb Flex Fuels kit uh, that just came out for the Forester and we're gonna swap out the intake manifold and intercooler and also the turbo. Uh, so hopefully we'll make some more power after this. We're gonna start off with removing the rad and draining the coolant. Um, we're gonna get all the stuff out like the alternator, power steering pump, uh, AC compressor out the way, battery intake, and then uh, we're gonna get down into the manifold and start taking all that stuff off. Vacuum hoses, cooling hoses, all that, we're taking that out. The fuel lines on a Subaru are not easy to get to. They're located underneath the intake manifold, which means you have to remove just about everything to get to it. And I figured I might as well replace a bunch of other stuff while I'm in there. And thus, the start of the slippery slope. We got these uh, AN fittings, which are a lot better than just having warm clamps or spring clamps on fuel lines, which on these and like bug eyes, it's, it's very common for fuel to start leaking out of them. While we're in there replacing the fuel lines with AN lines, I figured it was a good time to swap out the manifold to a true STI intake manifold. Androtech happened to have a brand new one there for me, and it's going to clean up the look of the engine bay a lot. We're doing the bigger injectors, and we need that because now with the uh, flex fuel and the E85, we need that flow to be better, and we got these bigger lines going on. The Cobb Flex Fuel Kit comes with 1050cc injectors that are made for handling ethanol. We're converting everything over to the more modern top feed injector style on this Subaru, which means new top feed fuel rails from Cobb as well. The new AN line will connect directly to these fuel rails. Before we reinstall the manifold, it's a good time to upgrade the turbo, since we don't have anything in the way in the engine bay right now. The turbo that's in the car is a stock TDO4 turbo. It's very small, inefficient, and old. We're going to upgrade to a newer 2015 STI turbo. We got the uh, stock turbo out. Um, it's got about 140,000 miles around there. So uh, with this new setup we're going with, with the uh, TGV deletes, new rails, new lines, everything, the injectors and stuff, we're gonna have to switch to this 15 SCI turbo. Better power, better reliability with all this stuff that's going on. You can tell that the turbo's a tiny bit bigger, <laughs> but it's bigger, it's better. So um, it's definitely, this one's only got like 3,000 miles on it. So it's fairly new and um, should be fun. This is an STI intercooler. It's much bigger than the factory Forester intercooler. A bigger turbo means more hot air, and the stock intercooler just isn't going to cut it. These aren't the only supporting mods that I need to be able to run Flex Fuel E85. I need a larger fuel pump, upgraded fuel pressure sensor, ethanol sensor, and a flex fuel module. Here we got the fuel pump, which we're going to need since we're going to be running E85, so we can get that flow, especially with everything that we've been putting to support it. Um, the fuel pressure sensor kit, which gonna go really good with the access port so that you're able to read the pressure of the fuel and you can make sure everything's running good. Right here we got the flex fuel ethanol sensor kit. This pretty much reads the ethanol in the fuel. Sometimes the uh, actual sign they got up on the gas stations, it, it may not be accurate, which is why it's good to have like a flex fuel kit so that you're able to run and with any ethanol and it's and it's okay it'll run good uh, the last box is the flex fuel module which is pretty much what converts the signal so that the car is able to read it and pretty much it converts it to subaru so it'd be able to work okay so now we are uh, running the fuel line to the fuel pressure regulator and the fuel pressure uh, i guess sender uh, so that i can see 
what my fuel pressure is looking like on the access board itself. We are running a fuel pressure regulator just because it helps get a little bit more consistent fuel pressure. So we're currently running those lines and we're putting the flex fuel sensor in and the new bracket that uh, comes with the Forester kits from Cobb bolts right onto the intake manifold here. Cars consume more fuel when they're running on ethanol, so we need to increase the fuel flow from the fuel pump in order to compensate. The Cobb kit includes this AEM high flow fuel pump. It's plug and play and fits right into the factory fuel tank. With the fuel lines now running through the ethanol sensor and a base tune loaded onto the ECU, it's time to start it up. All right, so now we're at Turbo XS and we're gonna get Francine on the dyno and actually get it tuned with the E85. I don't know what kind of power it's gonna make, but hopefully not a lot because Subaru engines can't hold a lot. Uh, let's hope it doesn't blow up. How much power do you want? Uh, 310. Okay, nothing more? If anything, less. Okay, fair yeah. enough. 310. We'll do, we'll do one pull, kind of see what it's got. And then that's it, like tone it down fuel economy and reliability. From what I've read online, 350 wheel torque is the most that you want to run on a stock Subaru block. And my engine has 147,000 miles on it, cool. so it's already pretty old. Before we do anything, we need to get a baseline number, which is how much horsepower the engine is currently making before we start tuning. Benjamin. 240 horsepower. 237 foot-pounds of torque. <laughs> how, how slow is Ben's car? Very slow. 240 horsepower slow. <laughs> Jermaine started dialing in the tune first before increasing any boost pressure. And with a couple more dyno pulls, the car is running much more healthy. So on the 16 pounds of boost, we're making about 271 horsepower. Okay. Um, you want to turn it up a little bit? Just a little? I know you want to. What is, what is safe? You want to turn it up a little bit? <laughs> Stock boost pressure for an STI is 17 PSI. The maximum that you can safely run on this turbo is about 23 PSI. But I want to keep this engine as reliable as possible, so I want to run close to stock boost pressure. So the most that we're going to run is 18 PSI. Hey Ben, so I think this is, this is for extra downforce, right? Yeah, this is going to be a permanent permanent mod now. Yeah. I think I'm just going to ditch the hood. I've seen plywood splitters and this is kind of an extension of that where it's yeah. cardboard uh, hood scoops. Yeah, maybe I'll put one on the bottom as well, like a little Pringle. <laughs> huh? 293. 293 wheel horsepower at 18 PSI is the most that I want to safely run on the car on 93 octane. Okay. Looks like it's time to add the E85. We're actually going to drain some of the normal pump gas out of the car. When we're switching over to ethanol, I like to have as much ethanol in the tank as possible so we get the highest ethanol content. This is what I have to get used to now. If I ever track this car on the 85, I'll need to bring gas jugs. What's the blend right now? We have 91% ethanol. How can you tell? Uh, he has a sensor on the fuel line. It's uh, built into the Cobb tuning ethanol kit. Like, wow, that torque went up. 338 foot-pounds of torque. How much horsepower? 319.8. Horse horsepower. <laughs> so that's 338 foot-pounds and 319 horsepower on 17 and a half pounds of boost. Pretty good. The power of corn on the cob? <laughs> Absolutely. That's the power of eating your vegetables? <laughs> yeah. Eat your vegetables, guys. <laughs> 371 foot-pounds of torque. 
uh, which I'm pretty sure the engine can only hold like 350 safely. Uh, so we're gonna turn it down now. Uh, it made 326 horsepower. So Tremaine, why did it make so much more torque than horsepower? In the mid-range, you're hitting about 18, 19 pounds. And at high RPM, you're only hitting about 16 pounds. And so that bleeding off of the boost pressure on the top end is why the horsepower is down a little bit. But still a pretty good number. I don't want that much power, so we're gonna make it reliable and uh, fun to drive over Kiki power. Uh, I'm gonna bring the boost pressure down into mid-range, kind of flatten out about 18, 17, 18 pounds. And on the top end, try and flatten that out too. So we have 18 pounds at 3,500 and probably six at 6,000 RPM, we got uh, 18 pounds too. So that'll flatten out the torque peak and kind of give you strong horsepower gains on the top. Jermaine turned the power back down to a safe 310 wheel horsepower and 348 wheel torque. This also leveled out the power band to be more smooth, consistent, and predictable. Thanks to everyone at Andertech, Cobb Tuning, and Jermaine at Turbo XS for installing the Flex Fuel Kit and squeezing out a reliable gain of 70 wheel horsepower and 111 foot pounds of torque. Not a lot of boost pressure. Torque That's spins fun. tires though, right? It's all wheel drive, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> torque breaks the drive shaft. Tor yeah, yeah, torque breaks things. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we, we took it down on the E a little bit, uh, yep. just to be safe. And because you're scared. Uh, I'm responsible, Jermaine. This, okay. is, this is my daily driver. Okay. This is the guy that put right. E85 on his Forester. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not a race car, but I just did race car things. Yeah, you know, I can get a lot of groceries really fast. Fair. Yeah. Right. Turbox S. <laughs> Turbox S. Turbox S. Plural. There's multiple boxes in here. <laughs> Turboxes. That's out of focus. Wow, that's pretty rad. All right, so we're at the point where we're getting ready to install these uh, flex fuel kit stuff. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> so, come here, Austin. Car makes a lot of torque. Torquezilla. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap.